Commissioner Mapisan. No, I, I want to make a follow up. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Malema. Uh, yes, Justice you may proceed. Matlanga, you said something about the person who appointed would have made a consideration about three years and six months. I don't understand that comment. What do you mean by that? Oh, no, I was not uh, talking about my three years, six months. I, I made that point, uh, Commissioner, in the context of uh, it being put to me that uh, um, um, Commish, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Justice Langa was the was the only only candidate. So I yes. Then I said yes. Even so, even so, if the aspect of the length of the, the term is such a crucial aspect, then it should have uh, been something that should be at on the table even at that level. That that, that is what I meant. But Commissioner Mbofu makes a point that uh, we may appoint someone who has 12 years to go. Yes. And uh, in three months' time, we realize this person was a, a terrible mistake. An impression wants to be created here that we are going to put our, heads on our, our hands on our head. Is that not wrong? Because if we realize in three months' time, six months' time, one year's time, five years' time, that we have appointed the wrong person. I don't know what's the wrong person. Are there no institutional mechanism to self-correct? Um, thinking of the CAF, uh, Commissioner Malema, um, you, 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 you'd probably have, have seen in the Judicial uh, Service Act under the, the disciplinary processes there um, that um, it is not everything that can lead to getting rid of a judicial officer. So uh, I think it is at that level perhaps that, uh, that Commissioner Mpofu would be raising, uh, raising this. Um, um, at the level of leadership, sometimes you may not reach a point where you say, we must, <laughs> short, of, short, short of for a, a, a voting process, for example, you know, you, you may not be able to reach a level at which you say, let us get rid, rid of that, uh, that judge. And you know how in South Africa and in most countries, I believe, you get rid uh, of judges is through an impeachment uh, process. So there are certain, there may be certain shortcomings with regard to the level of leadership, which may fall far short of getting to, to, to that sort of level. No, I agree, Justice. All I want is South Africans to be assured whether those things get to be applied or not is something else. But in our judiciary, if a terrible mistake has been committed in the appointment of the judge, there are institutional mechanisms to correct that. It's, it's not a a hopeless situation that uh, 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 was stuck for 12 years as if there is no mechanism uh, because I earlier said I don't know what will be such a terrible mistake uh, that will all be like in six months Yo, this was a horrible mistake um, uh, uh, I don't know I'm trying to imagine that but if that happens they are institutional mechanisms to self-correct. Like you said, they might take long or all of that, it's okay, but we agree that they are institutional mechanism where we can intervene if there is a, a terrible mistake with a judge appointed by this August House. Yeah, yes, yes, uh, Commissioner. Um, it is this, uh, this body that is, besides the recommendations that it makes in terms of uh, the, the constitution, 
um, it is also the body that is also tasked with advising on matters that pertain to the judiciary. I guess in that context, in that context, it may maybe raise certain issues with the judiciary as a body because a chief justice is not the judiciary as a whole. So if an issue is about the judiciary, then this body may raise that with the judiciary as a collective, exactly on the basis that aside of recommendations on appointments, it also has the mandate to advise on issues pertaining to the judiciary. Of course, if the shortcomings are of a nature that falls within or what, a, what the Chief Justice may have to be disciplined on or about, then, then the, 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 that, has to, that has to be done as well. Uh, no, all I'm saying is that if, okay, let me talk about a Chief Justice. If a Chief Justice becomes a horrible mistake, like we once had with some judge there in Pretoria who said, it's still to see a black woman who's not raped by their uncles or something like that. A, a chief justice immediately after this, he says something like that. Are the despite the, the, uh, still having 12 years, are the institutional mechanism to hold that chief justice accountable and decisive action taken against that chief justice? Or will be stuck with a chief justice who view black African women in the manner I described earlier on. No, 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 uh, uh, Commissioner, you, you do not have to be, you do, the, the, the Commission and the country, and the country does not have to be stuck with, uh, with somebody like that, especially, especially somebody you know, at, with transgressions at the sort of level that you give, or it may not be transgressions of that nature, but comparable transgressions the act is there. The constitution provides for impeachment and at a certain level, that judicial officer, including a chief justice, may have to be or would have to be impeached. They are not above, one, the constitution that provides for impeachment and two, the actual processes that are provided for in the judicial commission service. Act. A chief justice is not above those processes. Now, here we've got a candidate of 12 years, well qualified, well articulated. Uh, okay, let me leave it. I will, I will take it on my turn. Thank you. I, I thought this was it, <laughs> Commissioner Malema. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Malema. <laughs> Commissioner Mapisa Nagula. Thank you very much, Acting President, and, and thank you, uh, Justice Malanga. Thank you, Commissioner. Justice Malanga. Somewhere in... No. Let me make a follow-up, uh, Acting President. Please do. I think by the time we get <coughs> yeah, to you, I'll you'll have done. exhausted your questions. <laughs> I'll be done because it looks like these questions are coming even before my turn. Um, I, I don't know, uh, Justice Matlanga, if you are doing yourself a justice. Because they are not asking you for an opinion of this body. They are asking you your opinion, saying, do you think South Africa is ready for a female justice? It's not a question directed at should this body appoint a female justice? That's not the question. Um, and, and I liked the way you came earlier on about the LGBTQ community. What happened to that feminist about LGBT? Now that we are dealing with real stuff, the real character is showing up. Because the same stand you took on LGBTQ plus communities, the same stand we take on women. Because all of them are victims of 
masculinity and all the isms you were speaking about earlier on. It shouldn't be that um, now that you think you are being put at the corner, you compromise that which came across as your fundamental principles because we are going to doubt them. Now, let me ask the question again. Do you think South Africa is ready for a female justice, chief justice? Um, oh God, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, commissioners. I have a strange phone, which even if it's off, it is actually off. If I have an alarm, the alarm goes off even if it's off. I, I, I apologize, commissioners. And I don't know how to sort that out. <laughs> Maybe it's alarmed by the question. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this, this you are bell, forgiven. This Just bell, my this, love. this bell, unlike in boxing, boxing is not saving me, Commissioner Maleva. <laughs> and and I had uh, expected this question um, from Commissioner Malema. And I, 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 I know how he, good he is with uh, what uh, the Americans call comebacks. That is, somebody says something and then you clap him. And uh, I had thought that uh, I would say to Commissioner Malema, but of course I was already thinking he would come with a very serious clap. I had thought, uh, Commissioner Malema, I'm actually looking forward to the next elective conference of the EFF. And I want, I want to see Commissioner Malema stepping back and saying, I'm now paving way for a woman commander-in-chief of the EFF. <laughs> Please don't come with, with your characteristic comebacks, Commissioner Malema. <laughs> uh, Commissioner, towards the end of uh, your question you you said otherwise you may even doubt the 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 genuineness of the views uh, that i have expressed um, before answering the question um, um, let me say please don't and uh, and uh, and other commissioners as well and uh, and let me also say that it is not just, you know, talk. Uh, 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 it is there even in my judgments. For example, the Bonya judgment. For example, the Scribante versus Daniels versus Scribante. For example, the Mukoni judgment, where I came to the assistance of a poor, vulnerable woman. Um, so I do live by those. <clears throat> uh, so whatever happens, it should not be on the basis that you doubt the genuineness of that. Um, maybe let me just say, I, I will accept that. I will accept that. Uh, um, I'd say I have attempted to put myself forward as, a, as also a credible candidate and uh, and leave it to this commission to exercise its mind as to who it con ultimately cons for, for whatever reason, for whatever other reason, I have attempted to do the best I can in that regard. But, uh, but uh, perhaps let me just say I, I accept that. Uh, uh, Justice uh, Madlanga, the, the we are now looking for a, a chief justice. I think we'll later look for a, a CIC of the EFF at that time. <laughs> but for now, we are looking for a chief justice. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll enter that debate there's, there's, at that time. There's that <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm worried, I'm, and, and I respect to DL, I mean, Dalu will tell you that you are one of the judges that even when you rule against some of us, you do it in such a way that we, 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 we come out of it learned, educated, and appreciating that we might have missed it here or there. I mean, you used to do it very well with ch 
uh, Justice uh, Javtam told is, is gone. So the two of you, every time you write judgment, even when you disagree with us, you know, it's so educative. It's, there's nothing that you feel personally attacked or anything of that sort. And, and um, you know, a lot of people support women until it comes to them. Yes. When it's done there, it's okay. Don't come close closer to the office of the CIC. Otherwise, <laughs> there's going to be a problem. But uh, on every platform, women must be empowered. Women this, women that. Is this not an opportune moment? where you say, demonstrating practically beyond the issues of judgment, where I'm not personally involved or affected by that. There are two parties. I'm not a litigating party. I'm making this judgment for these people they were before me. This is where I can practically make a demonstration of my commitment, even before coming before this body, and say to the president, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you have identified me as one of those people. But I think we need a female now. I mean, 30 years. It's going to be 30 years. There's never been a female chief justice. If anything, the judiciary has performed worse than us, politicians. Because we have had a vice president... Uh, two of them who were uh, females as a country. But never did we have a chief justice or even a deputy chief justice who was a female for 30 years. Shouldn't we have reached a point where the male judges who always tell us and the justices who always tell us they support gender and all that pen it to the president and say, you know what? We think now is time we get a female chief justice. Because we've been theorizing about it. Is this not an opportune moment where all of us who say we support females, irrespective of us being identified as potential candidates, say we think a female uh, can be a chief justice? Because I'm worried, uh, Justice Madlang, you know, apart from you, and you know we know that, apart from you, repeatedly saying you leave it to us you are struggling to say south africa is ready for a female justice but in this context you will have to look at how we perform because we are ready you can't argue that but it's not coming out of your mouth and that's what we're going to argue when we meet that that commitment that's what makes me now doubt the earlier commitment and the commitment in the judgments because a staunch supporter of this will not struggle to say, we are ready for a, a female a, a, a chief justice. If you were to ask me on the eve of 2024 uh, national elections, where I will be contesting and you say to me, Mr. Malema, don't you think South Africa is ready for a woman president? I will say it's ready. Because South Africa, it is ready for... A, a, a woman president. So why should I, I, I be giving a long explanation instead of just coming out clearly and say, we are ready. We have, we have always been ready. We have led by different capable women in the judiciary. Uh, you are even made much better place to cite their names and, and, and say, but in this context, in, irrespective of what I've said, I'm here, I'm available, and let this body take a decision on what needs to happen. But I, I hear, and that's what worries me, acting president, I hear you struggling to commit that South Africa is ready to have a female chief justice. And, and that is really troubling me. I mean, let's leave the fact that there's a candidate who, who contest you or you're contesting each other in this. Because that candidate might come and perform badly. And you performed better. We'll still appoint you, but it doesn't rule the fact that South Africa is ready for a female chief justice. It might not be a judge, uh, uh, President Meyer. And okay. this process might prove that. 
I, I, I accepted the, the proposition, uh, Commissioner Malema. I accepted the proposition. Thank you, Commissioner Malema. Uh, thank you, Acting uh, President uh, Justice Madlanga. I just want to ask, I, I know you, you dealt with that in your questionnaire, of going to the bench and going back to be an advocate. I, I, I find it very strange. Uh, please take us through. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner, I had... Uh, gone to the bench or come to the bench uh, fairly young. Well, I may be criticized maybe at the level of, well, that was not uh, sound judgment on my part. And if somebody says so, uh, maybe I will not try to argue against that. I came to the bench uh, fairly young. At the time I did, I was the youngest judge in South Africa. I was uh, 34. Uh, some may say 34 is old. <laughs> um, I had a young family, um, and you know what uh, that uh, entails in terms of uh, expenses and so on and so on. Um, and after about five years, uh, I just uh, could no longer. And I was, I was uh, quite public about this. I was never even secretive about it. Uh, it was not, uh, you know, the sort of uh, silent, uh, resigned for what? What was the term that's usually that's normally used? Personal reason or something like that. Um, fine, I did not make a public statement, but I was open about it. Um, the minute I felt no, I ca can no longer stand it, I went to, I was acting at the Constitutional Court at the time. I went to President Shaskalsin. I explained everything to him. I was open with him. I didn't just say personal reasons. No, I'm, I'm out. And then I made an appointment with um, the, the minister then was uh, Minister Penwell Maduna. I also... Um, spoke to him and fully explained and gave him the same facts that I've just given to you now. Uh, both of them did uh, try to, 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 dis, to, to, to say, ah, no, 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 please don't. And uh, I mean, I understood where they were coming from, but uh, unfortunately, Commissioner, um, the reality was I just could no longer go on. It was, uh, to cut a long story short, those... Uh, Unfortunately, and, and, and I left for not, for, for, it was not for any lack of love for the job. I still liked what I was doing. I would have stayed on, and, but, but it just became impossible. And uh, rather than reach a point where it would, uh, I'm not saying I would have done anything improper, but, you know, it could uh, have reached a, a point where it just becomes, uh, you know, um, horrible for me in the sense that there's the judge uh, getting sequestrated or something like that. Those, those were the facts, uh, Commissioner. Why did you come back? Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for <laughs> the laughter. Um, I still remember the dates, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Malema. Um, I was on holiday in December, uh, you know, late December after Christmas, uh, late 20s, uh, yeah, yeah, close to the end of the month, and I was called by, I, 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 I hope my colleagues will not uh, feel embarrassed about me revealing this, and I was called by uh, the acting chief justice, um, he was still uh, the judge president of the labor court, but he had uh, <clears throat> acted at the constitutional court. And uh, he, 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 he said he, he, there was something he wanted to talk to me about. Uh, and I said, well, fortunately I am, I was on holiday in Durban. I said, I am in Durban. And he came to me to see me. It was on the 1st of uh, January 2012. I think, and he broached the subject with me and, uh, and said, haven't your circumstances changed now? 
And even before I left, he had been wanting me to go to act at the Labour Appeal Court. He was really sitting on me. So that's the level at which he, he, he respected me as a colleague and, a, and as a judge. And so he, he, he said, as a colleague who knew me and who respected me, um, um, did I not think that it was now time to come and rejoin them as, uh, as colleagues on the bench? And then on the 18th of February, uh, and with him having called me a few days before, I met my colleague whom you mentioned, uh, Justice Jafta. He also asked to, 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 to meet me. I met him on the 18th of uh, February that same year, and, and he too broached uh, the same subject. Um, I might mention that other colleagues as well, a friend of mine who is a judge in Port Elizabeth, Judge Mandela Makaula, had been talking about the same thing quite a number of times. But you know how sometimes you treat friends. I never took my close, close, close friend. I mean, he comes from my hometown, grew up as a young Bafana together. I, I would just tell him to, yeah, get off. So I started, uh, I then started thinking uh, about it uh, quite seriously, Commissioner, and, uh, and I think that did weigh heavily with me. My question is, why did you come back? You left because you had personal circumstances that led to you leaving. So your coming back meant that those circumstances have changed for the better, to avoid having a judge being sequestrated. I, I, I felt I was uh, comfortable to come back. So you came back in February? No, 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 to join the court. No, that was meeting Justice Shafter on the 18th of February, 2012. I was then appointed uh, with effect from the 1st of August, 2013. Now, do you think that uh, judges must go to the houses of politicians? Do you think it is correct for judges to go to the houses of politicians? and later say, no, I had visited the house of a politician because there was a matter of national importance that I wanted to discuss with this politician. But you can't take the country into confidence as to what are those matters of national importance that makes you visit politicians in their houses. Do you think that helps to enhance the good image of the judiciary? Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I would say, yeah, to, to the extent that uh, the, 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 the situation may create suspicion, perceptions, and so on, I would, uh, I would say, say it, is, it is not right. But at the level of whether or not you should go at all, um, I, I would say, I mean, uh, we, we know uh, there are politicians that I know at a personal level um, and I would have no problems with them coming to my house, and I would have, I would have no problems at all, all going to their houses. Uh, but, but I again emphasize, and my understanding is that what you raise with me is at the level of a possibility of a perception that may even create possibilities of uh, does this not get to the level of a lack of impartiality? You know, those sort of negative perceptions that should not exist around the judiciary. If it is something that would raise those sort of problems, I would say then there is something wrong with it. No, I understand the one of friendship and all yes. of that. We live yes. in the same yes. society. Yes. We have gone to school together yeah. and all manner of things. But a point where yeah. it comes out later that you visited a politician um, and uh, when you are asked what were you doing in that politician's house you say no we're discussing a matter of national importance so meaning you have a secret with a politician as a judge and when that type of a meeting is exposed 
you are still not in a position to take the country into confidence. Does it help to build the confidence of society on our judiciary where a judge can have a secret with a politician and when exposed you still don't want to reveal that type of a secret? Does it help to enhance Any, the good image of the judiciary? Anything, anything, Mr. Malema, including that example, it could even be a different example, anything that could, that could create the impression uh, of, uh, you know, the, the, the possibility, the possibility of an association that may create a perception of, um, lack of impartiality, lack of independence uh, is deleterious to the idea of an independent judiciary. I don't know if I heard you properly, Justice, about the, you said that Chief Justice oh, yeah. must be. Yeah. No, I'm on something else. I'm done with that one. You said uh, Chief Justice must be a judge and not be this super it's, it's a, SG, SG, super SG yes. and, and plus uh, you don't want to claim that you understand the administrative role of a Chief Justice, you don't know. Are you saying you are applying for a position where you don't know, apart from being a judge, what is required? Or what are the duties of this Chief Justice administratively? Um, because I had to say you don't know those responsibilities. You don't want to be claiming to know them. Because no, more than being a judge yes, now, yes. we are looking... Because the judge's story and a judge of a constitutional court yes, is yes. out, that one. We, we know you can be. And we have no doubt about yes. it. Now we're looking for a leader who's going to have to be not only a judge, but also lead administratively to make sure that this uh, court runs um, effectively and not only the court, the whole of judiciary and key amongst those will also include the spending because I had someone saying to you don't like budget and leadership is budget whether you are a president of South Africa or not you can't have a minister of finance you can't prevail over and make sure that all of those things are done accordingly because let's say the SG misuses the funds, it's going to come back to you. Because as you are speaking about the, the SG of the constitutional court, I'm trying to imagine even the picture. I can't even think of that person who is this person. All I'm thinking of with the constitutional court, mukwe mukwe. So if anything goes wrong, whether you are interfering or you don't interfere, whether you like the budget or don't like the budget, it's going to come back to you as a leader of that institution. So uh, please uh, make me comfortable about that because I had to say uh, you don't know the administrative roles, you don't want to interfere, you don't want to be a super SG, and therefore uh, some of those things you leave to people that were not subjected to this. And as a leader, you take full responsibility, including the, the mistakes of the SG, they come back to you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Malema. Um, uh, uh, if I created uh, an impression of being clueless as to what the Chief Justice uh, does administratively, um, that was not intended. Um, because if that were the case, I would not have been in a position to attempt in what I believe was a fairly detailed manner to even set out a vision as to how certain issues should be addressed in future. Um, so um, I, I do have an idea of the sort of administrative or leadership issues that uh, relate to and can be performed by a Chief Justice. And and some of them are even, for example, in the Judicial Service Act, Superior Courts Act, and, 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 and even the Constitution, uh, one of the commissioners who were online <clears throat> actually 
uh, referred me to, to, to the norms and standards that in terms of the constitution must be set up by the Chief Justice. What I was uh, seeking to, to address with regard to what I do not know and which should uh, uh, be um, hopefully, Commissioner Malema, be acceptable because I have not been exposed to that as an ordinary judge of the Constitutional Court. Um, what I was seeking to refer to was the possibility of other administrative functions that may well be out there as well. Uh, and it is those that I was trying to, to refer to. It was by no means saying I, as a Chief Justice, if appointed, I would shirk or shirk the responsibility with regard to those that I say are clearly uh, within the remit of the, the, <clears throat> the Chief Justice. With regard to the budget, uh, that too, I, 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 I just said, it's something that I will apply my mind to. It is something that I am even willing to consider what the best practice internationally is on it. Uh, uh, that is, who in, in, in other jurisdictions, in particular comparable jurisdictions, say in Africa, uh, yes, of course, uh, I could look elsewhere as well. Uh, who within those judiciaries, for example, I first heard the idea of an administration that is attached to the court and removed from the, 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 the other executive functions. I first heard of that idea from a colleague from Mozambique uh, when I was a judge earlier. We, we knew nothing about that in, uh, in, in South Africa at the time. So one can learn even on issues about how our budgets are administered from what other countries do. So it was not a question of an outright rejection of the idea. I guess it was more a question of saying managing monies. But I did say, if you remember, uh, uh, Commissioner Malema, I did say, um, but of course, the reaction that I have given, which I'm not, uh, without rejecting your idea, Commissioner Singh, the, 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 the idea in no way suggests that I am averse to being involved at all on budgets. I said, because the OCJ services the judiciary, and because the Chief Justice is the head of the judiciary, it makes practical sense for the, for the Chief Justice to have an input on the OCJ's budget. And of course, it would not be only the Chief Justice, other heads of course at all levels would also have, would also have to have an input. Um, uh, uh, Justice Madlanga, as you speak <laughs> about learning this um, administrative components that we may not be aware of, I put another six months to one year of you learning that into these three years. And then I put another three to six months of you learning in the outside world how the budget works and you are left now with one year, six months, before you do the actual thing, just learning. Because if you ask us, uh, uh, politicians, when you are Zoom office, the most difficult thing, she's there, she's a speaker. She, she is not old in that position. For sure, she's still grappling with a lot of small detail. Some she even gets shocked, oh, he's done this way or that way. By the time she becomes well equipped as a speaker, it's 2024, we're going to elections. 
Because to learn administration must never be confused to be meaning some simple thing or you are just going to arrive at an office where you are going to be welcomed with both hands. You are going to have to learn these people and do all manner of things. Which I thought Justice Madlanga would have done some small onion research, even if you are a small, even if you are a junior. Um, ach, not junior, I don't want to call you such things. What? What would judge, not in the office of Chief Justice, but an ordinary judge. But preparing for this uh, type... It's, it's not puny, not at the level of yes. the constitutional court. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, sorry, Commissioner Malema. As an ordinary judge, yes. who's now preparing to go into that office, you would have said to us, about, apart from this that is described in the constitution and the norms and standards and all of that, these are the issues administratively uh, we're going to have to deal with. And on matters of budget, you would have also looked at what happened to the previous Chief Justice and what are the issues that you want to take up immediately when you take over. Because we don't want to hear of a scandal of corruption coming out of the office of the Chief Justice because our Chief Justice doesn't know how the budget in that office operate. In that six months when you are still trying to learn, you know these people of South Africa, Already they've approved the IT tender. It's gone and it's not done properly. So, uh, what, because I'm going to raise these points when we retreat on, on Saturday, that I'm worried about these issues that you, you are going to be this good judge and get destroyed by this small detail that you have not given yourself sufficient time to acclimatize yourself with or have an idea of how you're going to deal with it because it's very big it might be small but it's a very big uh, operation which makes that office run on daily basis um on the first issue about the possibility of a long time uh, being taken um finding out what happens in other jurisdictions with regard to the budget um, I, would, I would say that the time cannot be long at all. I mean, if appointed, I will have ready access to, to, to chief justices in other countries, pick up the phone and just ask the question, pick up the phone, talk to another chief justice. Within uh, a few days, you have, the, you have the information readily at hand. For example, I, I said earlier that uh, we, we found what the situation is with regard to turnaround times for handing down judgments by, by apex courts. We, we were tasked by our colleagues to, to do this, uh, the, the, to work on the, the working procedures, revise the working procedures of the Constitutional Court. Second half of, uh, of last year, by the 5th of December, we already had a, a completed document, which of course we are just uh, crossing the T's, dotting the I's on now, but we're able to pull out one recommendation for immediate implementation. But even there, we had had to go out to set to other jurisdictions on information, and we were able to come out with a document within a very short space of time. Second half, by December, we have something ready. And on this one, and if I'm Chief Justice, I will be able to just pick up the phone. Who controls the budget and, and, and how? Um, I, I, even on the second one, Commissioner, I, I do not uh, share uh, your view that it, it would take a terribly long time for me to get around uh, the question of, of... I have interacted with the, the Secretary General um, um, uh, in context that, of course, have nothing to do with being Chief Justice, which I am not. Uh, and the, Chief, the, the, the Secretary General is, is very cooperative, very supportive to, to the judiciary. Immediately upon appointment, I would set up an appointment with her. And, uh, and, and, and she would take me through the processes. And uh, I think you, you heard me when I was talking earlier about, uh, you know, uh, getting up to speed on, I even rattled off a few principles, you know, 
in the sort of areas of law that we as black uh, people would not be exposed to, talking about in, in, inutility, lack of innovativeness, and so on and so on. Things that you would be getting to hear about now for the first time. But you would quickly, quickly, you know, get on top of them and be able to participate effectively. And even when a case is argued before the court, you saw this for the first time now, you read the papers, you went outside of the papers, did your own research quickly, and in court you are able to engage advocates sensibly and meaningfully. So even with this, I, I, I do not believe that for me, it would be something that would take me six months and, you know, I, I, I do not believe it would, uh, Commissioner. My last question is, do you think commissions of inquiry add value in a democratic South Africa or is just a waste of money? Or they are used by politicians to buy themselves time so that they can lull society and not be held accountable. Because I'm trying to think of any successful commission of inquiry since 1994. I, I can't think of any. Successful in a sense that when it concluded its work and made recommendations, there was serious follow-up and action was taken. There's no such. And as a result, a lot of money gets to be used in those commissions of inquiry. And lawyers just line up their pockets and make money out of the taxpayer, but we don't see results uh, of uh, uh, those uh, uh, commissions of inquiry. I mean, uh, I'm asking this because you were in the Margana Commission. Um, there was a commission on arms deal I, I don't know what is happening, what, where. So I'm trying to think, are these things really relevant? For I know they have space in, the, in terms of the Constitution of the Republic and all of that, but have they really added value in our democratic society or they were just used to buy time so politicians mm. can lull society and lawyers make money out of it. You see, it's, I know uh, it's, Mr. Mpofi and them won't agree with the money, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Commissioner Malema, for, you know, reasons based on what you prefaced the question with and also what you ended the question with, may I ask, please, not to answer the question because you say so many ways politicians do this and you will remember that I repeatedly said here that uh, we as judges should avoid uh, engaging in, uh, in political controversy. May I please ask to... Let me ask it differently. <laughs> Let me leave politicians. I had, I had to expect that. Uh, do, do commissions of inquiry add value in our uh, judiciary or in our democratic society. Since 1994, have they played any significant role which helped um, ordinary people to receive justice? Mm. Of, 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 of the few that I, I, I can think of, I, I cannot uh, think of something that has uh, tangibly redounded to to the benefit of uh, of people. I cannot think of any. Thank you, uh, Justice Madlanga. Thank, Thank you, you Acting President. Malema. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Malema.